Hello, my friends. I am excited to share this with you today. Um, this is what I call brain ninjing, and it's a unique skill that is really important and helpful in brain rewiring, but also just helpful in life in general, which is how do you use your brain when it's not working? <laughs> and this came up because I had a call with a client who um, was using, you know, her tools the way they're usually laid out to be used. And a lot of times uh, brain rewiring and a lot of um, even like cognitive behavioral therapy and a lot of different kinds of therapies for healing are top down. So you're, you know, recognizing thought patterns and you're changing them from within your brain. Like you're observing your own brain function and changing it from the inside. And that's a great tool until you hit some point where you can't use your brain anymore because it's that non-functional. Um, and that could be a wide variety of things. It could just be enough panic that you can't use your brain anymore. It could be brain fog. Um, for me, I had a mental illness, which makes your brain uh, not really a hospitable place to be. It's like trying to live on Mars. It's just, it doesn't really work. Um, and you want to change it, be, and you need to change it from the inside. So what you do, this is, this is the beautiful thing. So your brain and body, the chemical state is linked. You know, again, your brain is inside of your body, which is pretty cool. And that means whatever state chemically your body's in is going to affect your brain and vice versa. Uh, Tony Robbins talks about this, where he talks about changing your state and he talks about using things like exercise and so forth. And there are, and that's great. However, for someone who's in recovery from a chronic illness, a lot of times um, things like exercise aren't available. So this is gonna sound a little weird as I go through describing it. And there may be, there probably are technical terms for what I'm describing. I don't know them. Um, I use this to heal and that's what I'm offering you is uh, practical understanding of how to manipulate your uh, consciousness within your own brain and body in order to um, in order to heal, in order to calm. So the part, of, the first part of this is understanding that if your brain is stuck in a rut, if you're having again, even if you're not in recovery, but if you're having so much anxiety or panic that you can't think, because that's what happens. Like the the state, whether it's whether you have um, some sort of psychological or mental dysfunction happening, or it's just a kind of your um, run of the mill vanilla flavor panic. When that's happening, your brain doesn't, you cannot use, like you literally can't use your prefrontal cortex or your higher functioning brain in order to have that higher perspective to work with what, what other things are happening in there. And a lot of times when, when it comes to limbic system impairment recovery, recovery from a something, you know, from a the stress response being stuck on on a lot of times you just have so much stress chemistry that you you can't like that's that's all that's happening is stress chemistry and there's not an actual like there's nothing specifically to redirect there's no reason for it it's just that's where your system is stuck so um that's the understanding that allows you to bypass it and just go towards calm realizing that you don't need to fix anything there's not some thought that you need to change or some behavior you need to change you really just need calm and that's it and once you change the, your your chemical state to a calmer state in your body and brain your brain will clear and start producing healthier thoughts because of your state so again it's you're changing the state of your body and the chemical state you're in which pr your chemical state produces the quality of your thoughts for a lot of my recovery i just didn't think because i couldn't uh thinking at all was triggering so this isn't the case for everyone and i realize that i, I know that's the case um, but for a lot of people, there is a point, there comes a point in time in their recovery where that is the case, where thinking is not um, accessible without it being too much activity for the brain. And this ability to, um, well, the, the knowledge that all you need to do is change your state and that, that your state produces your thoughts. Your thoughts can impact your state, but your state also produces your thoughts. So um, and that's really, really powerful information. So if you can't work with your brain from your brain, you can work with your brain from outside of it. So the first, the first thing, and, and the reason I'm explaining this is that knowing that this is how it works is how you, um, that's how you actually use it. So understand that your limbic system, your, is kind of like your helper. It's your, you know, your emotional brain, your primitive brain. It's there to help you. You have to explain to it what you're doing in order to ha have it help you do it. So you knowing something is possible is what allows you to actually walk into that experience that you've never had before because you're saying, I know this is possible. I've learned it from science. So, okay, emotional primitive brain, we're going to do this now. 
because I know it's possible. But if you didn't tell yourself it was possible before you'd ever done it, you you wouldn't be able to recruit the rest of your brain to help you get there. So that's part of where one of my favorite sayings is that faith is more real than facts, meaning knowing that an experience or a defeat is possible is the first step to achieving it when you've never done it before. Um, and a lot of times, again, all we have in the brain is the experiences we have had. And in order to have a new experience, we have to believe it's possible in order to get the brain on track with helping us achieve it. So understand that you can change your state from your bot from with a focus that uses different parts of your brain than you're used to using. So this is how this goes. So a lot of times um, you can change what you're focusing on based on like you have a goal. So for example, if you're really in a stuck place and you know, okay, I know somewhere inside of me that I just really want to be calm. I just, I know that I just, I just choose calm. That's it for its own sake. This is again, a huge part of my recovery was like, I just choose calm for its own sake. That's it. So I made the decision saying executive decision. I choose calm. I'm making this happen. I don't care what it takes to make this happen. And then I would find ways to manipulate my focus to the parts of my brain where it felt safe, where, where there was a sense of, where there was nothingness. There's like a soft, sweet, dark rest. There's just nothing there. There's nothing happening. There's no panic. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's just nothing. Nothing happening in that part of your brain. And I know for me, a lot of times it was back regions of my brain. So I would, I would focus my attention until I could put my consciousness into the back of my brain and feel pressure or softness there. And there was just nothing happening anywhere else in my brain. A lot of times my eyes were shut. I used music a lot to achieve this. I would direct the music to the parts of my brain that I wanted to activate where I could tell there was nothing happening. And that's where I would go. I would go there and I would just hang out in that dark space doing nothing, being calm. And then my body would calm down and after a while, when I kind of came back into the room where I was, it was like, oh, everything's holding still. I'm okay. This is, you know, we're good, everything's fine. And I can now think and I can make dinner and I can eat and I can do things because my brain's not in a panic state anymore. Um, so that's one way. The other way though is sometimes even just to put all of your focus into your body in a healthy way where you're just wanting to get sensorially, um, what's the word I'm looking for? you want all of your senses to be in the room you're in. So instead of thinking about anything, you're putting all of your attention and focus into what does it feel like to be sitting on this, you know, cushion or on the floor or on the couch. I feel supported. Focusing on the sensation of being supported, of warmth or softness or something that feels soothing. Part of this is understanding that, um, being safe is an interior experience. One of the biggest things that the limbic system thinks when we are in recovery, and this is a very common thing, is it it, it tends to project the feeling of, the, of unsafety or fear onto the environment. It's something to do with the environment, and it'll have you running, running away from everything. And it, understanding that safety is an interior experience that you create for yourself is foundational to help you realize that that feeling of unsafety has nothing to do with your house, the people in it, the paint, the possible mold, the whatever, what have you. There are truly unsafe environments, but aside from that, once you've taken care of the, you know, whatever it is that needs to be done, a lot of times the fear lingers. And that's because the limbic system is thinking it has something to do with the environment. The reality is we make ourselves safe by what we choose to focus on. And then of course, higher functioning brain, like object, you know, um, executive decisions to create a healthy environment. But once that's done, the rest of it is all just your own brain. So choosing to focus only on sensations, physical sensations that are soft and soothing and comforting puts you back in your body, takes you out of the racing looping in your head or whatever un un other unpleasant thing is happening there. And there's just being. That's all there's left is just the softness of your own being when you can get your focus into something that is supportive and soft whether it's um, textile whether it's auditory whether it's visual um, I found that leaning my focus back into the back of my brain and observing my environment from a place where the only intention is just to kind of be with the environment that's it is very very calming and soothing because it's really just putting your brain in touch with reality as it actually is. And panic is usually caused by, again, the brain thinking about something or being triggered by something, but it's entirely happening within the, the brain itself, a different part of the brain. And when you get out of that part and come back into the room, 
the reality is in this room right now, everything's okay. Right here where you are right now, you're safe. You're fine. Everything's fine. The thoughts of all the other scary thoughts, they're not there anymore because you're not with them anymore. You move to a different part of your brain. So this is a really powerful, and again, it changes your state. And again, the quality, like as you folk, as you practice this, whether you're using sound, um, like sound healing type things, like I was describing with the music, whether you're using textile or visual, the more you practice that state, the calmer your body becomes and it produces a higher quality of thought. And that was magical to me to realize I, I didn't have to ever think. I just didn't think until I reached a high enough level of consciousness where my body was calm enough that when I, the thoughts I had were actually thoughts that I wanted to have. You know, they created a, a room inside my mind that was actually a nice place to be in and that I wanted to be in. So um, that was a really nice um, thing to discover for me personally because I couldn't be in my brain for most of my recovery. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my hack for how to drop out of your head, get into your body, get into the room and or use sound to move the energy through your brain to parts of your brain that are not currently activated where there's nothing happening so that you can reside somewhere where it's calm, it's soft, it's dark, there's nothing going on until everything calms down and you can come back to your life. And if you actually need to find a solution for something, the rest of your brain will then be available um, for use so that you can come up with a solution. And I will say though, again, for those of you in recovery, uh, I spent 15 months doing this because I couldn't, my prefrontal cortex like just turned off for 15 months of my recovery because of um, my particular journey. So I spent 15 months living in that space of just being and not knowing what was going on. Um, and eventually my prefrontal cortex and my neocortex finally kind of came back on and I got, I regained those functions. So again, calm is all you need. If you're calm, then your system can downregulate, it can re-regulate, it can come to a place where things will just sort themselves out in your mind and you'll be able to start using your brain normally again. So I just want to offer this as a, um, yeah, and this is a lot of times what I use or recommend for people whose, uh, their mood elevation tools have been crosswired because that's, for me, that was like everything because at one point my brain was reacting to, um, mood elevation. So if, if you like doing something in particular that your brain is like, yeah, no, we can't do that because I'm going to create a, a sensation or a symptom that blocks you from enjoying this. You can use the same technique to move to a part of your brain where all you can sense is the softness of nothingness and you can't sense the sensation anymore and you can rewire and create a positive association with that activity and gain it back. I actually also use this when I was getting my tattoo because I could move out of the part of my brain where I could feel pain. So I was able to make it through the whole three hour whatever process and I, I couldn't feel the pain because I, I had my headphones on and I kept myself in a part of my brain where I couldn't feel the pain. So it's a very like useful um, hack to have for life in general because anytime I go through any sort of procedure that's uncomfortable, I use this technique and I just focus on something else so that my brain doesn't know that there's anything happening in another part of my body and then it's over and I never felt it. So it's a pretty cool hack. So yeah, just wanted to offer you guys this tool and hopefully that makes some kind of sense. <laughs> It's definitely a weird thing to uh, to experience and to try to teach to somebody else, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense and uh, can help you guys through some sticky spots where the brain is not a nice house to be living in. Yeah. All right, all my love to you, my friends, and I will talk to you soon.